Okay, so now we have 100 participants. Tony, should we start? You betcha. Okay, all right. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Campus Sustainability Celebration 2020. I'm Xi Ming Kai. I'm the Associate Director for Institute for um, Sustainability, Energy, and the Environment. So we meet here today to celebrate our campus sustainability achievements in the past year, despite um, the pandemic situation. In particular, we accomplished ICAP 2020, and our chancellor will endorse and sign ICAP, ICAP 2020 at this meeting. So before this program starts, uh, let's perform the land uh, acknowledgement to recognize and respect uh, native people and our college, the traditional guardians of the land. Uh, so now I'm going to invite Meredith Small, uh, the sustainability coordinator at ISA, to read the uh, 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 acknowledgement for us. Meredith. Thank you, Ximing. We would like to begin today by recognizing and acknowledging that we are on the lands of the Peoria, Kaskaskia, Piankasha, Wea, Miami, Meskutin, Odawa, Sauk, Meskwaki, Kickapoo, Potawatomi, Ojibwe, and Chickasaw nations. These lands were the traditional territory of these native nations prior to their forced removal. These lands continue to carry the stories of these nations and their struggles for survival and identity. As a land grant institution, the University of Illinois has a particular responsibility to acknowledge the peoples of these lands, as well as the histories of dispossession that have allowed for the growth of this institution for the past 150 years. We are also obligated to reflect on and actively address these histories and the role that this university has played in shaping them. 
This acknowledgement and the centering of Native peoples is a start as we move forward for the next 150 years. All right, thank you, Meredith. So now I would like to invite Professor Mabel Kana, interim director of ISA, uh, to provide a speech on ICAP 2020. So please welcome Professor Kana. Thanks, Ming. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to welcome all of you to the campus sustainability celebration and to the release of our next climate action plan, ICAP 2020. Today, we celebrate the hard work of our students, faculty, staff, and community members in making our campus more sustainable. I'm Madhu Khanna, I'm the Interim Director at the Institute for Sustainability, Energy, and Environment. As you all know, IC has a threefold mission that includes interdisciplinary research and education, and also contributing to making our campus more sustainable. I want to first take this moment to say thank you to all of you for attending today and for your passion for making this campus more sustainable. We have a full agenda for you today and we've also planned a fun social hour after the program. At the end of the first hour, you will have a chance to chat with others in attendance as if we were in, together in person, which unfortunately we're not able to do this year. We will be providing a new Zoom link in the chat for you to join immediately following the celebration. Coming back to ICAP 2020, this is the campus strategic sustainability plan to achieve carbon neutrality as soon as possible, no later than 2050, and to expand our campus sustainability efforts holistically, including strengthening a culture of sustainability, zero waste practices, and integrating a sustainability component in our curriculum for all students. I would like to thank Dr. Evan DeLucia, the founding director of IC, and Dr. Mohammed Atala, who's the director of FNS, for their vision and leadership in creating an infrastructure for IC and FNS to collaboratively launch the process for ICAP 2020 two years ago. Hundreds of people from all parts of our campus and our community have worked diligently to contribute ideas to produce a plan that we can all take pride in. I would like to especially thank Dr. Shimin Kai, the Associate Director of Campus Sustainability at IC and Ms. Morgate, the Associate Director of FNS for Sustainability for their tireless efforts as co-chairs of the ICAP Working Group to identify areas where we could become more sustainable, gather ideas from all the stakeholders and integrate them into the document before us. Our campus has seen many successes in the past years on the sustainability front, including gaining accolades as the first B Campus USA in the Big Ten Conference, a perennial tree campus USA. Uh, we have a silver bike friendly university and we are a continuing gold level star performer. Our campus is honored annually by, by Second Nature and the Sierra Club for its leadership nationally. We have decreased our energy use intensity by more than 42% since 2008. We've reduced our air travel emissions by about 4%. We've reduced our campus water consumption by 37%. We have generated about $2.2 million uh, in, through selling our carbon credits since 2012, and that has helped to fund some of our campus sustainability efforts. This last year, we have been especially impressed by the input dedication of students that have attended monthly student input sessions and participated in taking action to let their voices be heard. We have had dozens of students represented on our various sustainability working advisory teams, our ICAP working group, and many other campus stakeholders actively been involved and contributed to ICAP in spite of their very busy schedules. We thank you and we look forward to your continued energetic work towards a more sustainable campus. The COVID-19 pand pandemic has revealed that we are more adaptable than we thought. And this is an example how, of how we can come together to secure our campus. We're also pleased to have released a sustainability training video this month in conjunction with the annual faculty staff ethics training. Provost Cangaleris has been a strong advocate in developing this video. And our goal is to eventually make sustainability a component of campus that is through military trainings. We are pleased to have worked with the human resources departments across campus to incorporate sustainability materials into new employee onboarding as part of our goal to ensure that everyone who visits our campus has a clear understanding of our commitment to sustainability. 
Last but not least, I would like to thank Meredith Moore, Tony Mancuso, and Jenna Kurzweil at IC for leading the, the coordination of our sustainability efforts, for ensuring effective communication of these efforts across campus, helping to organize this event. With that, I would like to welcome Chancellor Robert Jones to our campus sustainability event. We are grateful to have him with us today. Chancellor Jones, thank you so much for your leadership and advocacy for sustainability. You have been our greatest champion. Today, with your signature, we will officially launch ICAP 2020. With your approval, we are reaffirming a collective commitment to take action to bring the Illinois Climate Action Plan to life. Chancellor Jones, welcome. Sorry, sorry about that, that mute button, and now I have a frozen screen. There we go. All right, let's try this again. First of all, let me say thank you, uh, Dr. Connor, for your introduction, and thank you uh, to each and every one of you for joining the celebration today, who played a role in re-envisioning a sustainable future for uh, this university. This newest iteration of a uh, Illinois Climate Action Plan is both bold and ambitious. Uh, there's no one who will be looking down the list of goals and will accuse this university of trying to take the easy path when it comes to sustainability and to climate. From significant clean energy goals to waste reductions to educational programs to divestment from fossil fuels to reimagining the architecture and the landscape of the campus, ICAP 2020 is a case study in setting high goals when there are such high stakes at risk. The COVID-19 pandemic has been somewhat of a harsh reminder of how dramatically the world around us can change and change virtually overnight. And virtually overnight, much of, of the societal infrastructure that we perhaps all had taken for granted was di disrupted. And some of it probably will be disrupted on a permanent basis. But even as we continue to navigate the ongoing daily challenges of the pandemic. As a university, we must be also looking ahead and positioning ourselves for the landscape that will await us on the other side. And I think we must be prepared to recognize that even if we're able to find and deploy a vaccine in the future, the damage that is done to families and communities over the last 12 to 18 months will take decades to repair. And just as the world has relied on public land grant universities like ours to lead through our discoveries and our innovations during this pandemic, I believe our society will continue to depend on us to lead the rebuilding that will come. We must be committed to creating a future for our university that ensures that we will be ready and be able to meet this need. The ICAP 2020 is not just a map for a more environmental sustainable university. I believe that it's a guide to make sure that we are more resilient, more adaptable and more sustainable university in every single phase of our mission for decades to come. And of course, it was uh, mentioned originally, we plan for this celebration to be in person. And one of the ceremonial events was to include, include my formally signing the ICAP 2020 to officially launch this initiative today. But unfortunately, the restrictions of the pandemic prevents us from coming together physically and making the signing ceremony a little less dramatic uh, by having to do this virtually. But just as we've all learned to adjust our plans to adapt to this virtual circumstances, we have adopted the signing ceremony as well. So I believe that the ICAP team is going to take over the screen now 
and will officially unveil the ICAP 2020 that I was very, very proud and pleased to be the first to sign on behalf of the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, uh, Chancellor Jones. So now we have new guides for Illinois Climate Action Plan in the next five years. Uh, thanks again for our students, uh, staff and faculty who have contributed to ICAP 2020. So now in the following, I'm going to invite uh, our student leaders to have their comments. All right, so yeah, well, the poll, uh, let, me, let me just uh, very briefly introduce uh, the, uh, our students' leaders. So first, we will welcome um, uh, Alexis Perez-Chica, the president of Illinois Student Government, and also Siren, uh, Siren uh, Ahmad, the chair of the Environmental Committee the in her, uh, Illinois student government, uh, student government. So after Alexis and Siren, we will welcome Joe Edwards. Uh, he's the chair of the Student Sustainability Council. All right, so after we finish the poll, uh, we will have uh, those students leaders to share their comments. Okay, students now? Perfect, okay, I'm sweating for the poll. Awesome, so good afternoon, everyone. First, I want to begin by thanking IC and FNS for continuously prioritizing our environment and future. With the current state of our environment, it is essential for students all across the country to be engaged and active in doing their part. We are currently in a race against time to build a sustainable earth so we may have a healthy future. However, these changes begin at home, and that's exactly what we're doing. Before we can have a sustainable earth, we must start within our own communities. I am so proud that students of this campus are deeply passionate about developing a sustainable future and holding our university to a high standard. Students are the key to a sustainable earth. It is our teamwork, drive, and determination that make the change. Right now, it is more important than ever to listen to student voices and engage with them as we are the future of a sustainable earth. That is why I am ecstatic that for the first time ever, the 2020 ICAP includes a letter from the students. The letter is a step forward in the right direction to demonstrate a commitment to listening to student voices and concerns. The ICAP is a promise to the students and commitment to implement these innovative initiatives for the betterment of our greater campus community but it requires a collective effort. A majority of the objectives possess a collaborative nature in which students should not overlook their roles specifically in areas calling for divestment, campaigning for sustainable behavior in education, as well as advocating for communities who bear the brunt of environmental destruction. In 2019, the majority of the student body voted to divest from all fossil fuels and the ICAP reflects this, this decision, but much advocacy is still needed to fulfill this. Student organizations like Students for Environmental Concerns have organized and fought vigorously to educate and mobilize students all across campus in efforts to influence a divestment decision on the University of Illinois Foundation, the Board of Trustees, and the Illinois President. While much work has been accomplished, a lot still needs to be done. Also, in many areas of the ICAP, behavioral changes on campus from Illini Lights Out to bike sharing to even fulfilling a sustainability gen ed requirement in the future all require effort and compliance from students. It is integral for students to remain eager about education and sustainability and be aware of their own behaviors. 
And finally, an extremely important collaborative plan that student participation is definitely essential in is creating an environmental justice plan that focuses on communities that have been historically marginalized and fallen disproportionately vulnerable to climate destruction. The 2020 ICAP sets a strong plan for a sustainable campus, and we are so excited to see what the future holds. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I really want to echo everything Alexis and Serene just said. This, this is really an exciting time for sustainability on our campus. Even with the many challenges we continue to face, this 2020 ICAP lays out a bold vision for sustainability in Illinois. So my name is Joe and I chair the Student Sustainability Committee. I, I hope you've heard of us, um, but if not, we're a group of students responsible for allocating funds generated from the student initiated sustainability fees. What, what I'd really like to stress here is that students chose to pay these fees and consistently overwhelmingly reaffirm their support for investing in sustainability. To put some numbers on that, recently almost 87% of students voted to renew this self-imposed tax for sustainability. 87%. Think about that. That's crazy. When is the last time you can think of any tax referendum getting that much support? And that's just one of the many, many examples of the fierce desire students have to create a livable future. We want it, and we're willing to do what it takes to make it happen. And trust me, I know how difficult of a challenge our climate crisis presents, especially, especially as we also try to cope with the damage and uncertainty brought about by COVID-19. Just this past weekend, SSC met to make our first funding decisions of the semester. We also had to discuss how we're going to grapple with the near 80% cut to our expected budget due to COVID-related decreases in fee revenue. I understand that we certainly need to make a lot of cuts to recover from this pandemic, but I want to deeply, deeply urge all of you to do everything we can to ensure that sustainability not only remains off the chopping block, but that we continue to grow our investments, sharpen our resolve, and embrace a more aggressive goal in reaching carbon neutrality. We need to make sure that when we can finally take these masks off, we still have air worth breathing. All right, uh, thanks, uh, Alexis, Seren, and Joe. So now we will start our certificate and award program. So first, I like to invite Mavity Small to introduce our certificate, our Greener Campus Program, which is an important part of our campus sustainability development. Mavity. Thank you, Ximing. My name is Meredith Moore, and I am the Sustainability Programs Coordinator at IC. One of our most recent campus sustainability initiatives is the Certified Greener Campus Programs, which some of you may have heard of this certification opportunity. Um, essentially, what offices can do is certify to achieve bronze, silver, or gold, depending on their sustainability actions. We also have this fall with the evolving circumstances, we now have a home edition component. So offices can still get certified even if employees are working remotely or working from home. We've also this fall relaunched the Certified Greener Chapter Program where in a similar way, campus sororities and fraternities can achieve certification certification based on their level of commitment to environmental and sustainability initiatives. Also stay tuned for later this year because we plan to expand the certified greener campus programs to also include events, RSOs and labs, of course, while maintaining health and safety as the number one priority. We certify these different entities on a rolling basis. So there's no deadline to start the process or to achieve certification. And the certificates are valid for one year. Uh, so you have plenty of time and we encourage you to start now and get your entities certified. For more information and to start the process, you simply go on the IC website and click Greener Campus and there you will see a comprehensive guide to start the process and of course we're here to help you along the way. So with that, I am very excited to highlight two of the offices that have been certified this fall, uh, which is of course no easy feat given the, the evolving circumstances. So if we can go to the next slide, we'll first highlight the Department of Chemistry Administrative Office for achieving gold certification. 
And I want to especially congratulate Lisa Williamson, who is here with us today, who is the sustainability ambassador on behalf of the administrative office at the Department of Chemistry. Um, so recently their office underwent renovation and throughout this process, they were able to repurpose and use campus surplus instead of buying new furniture, which is fantastic to use what we already have. As a larger step then, they also added occupancy sensors to control light and thermostats, as well as installing airtight window, um, airtight insulated windows. So congratulations to the Department of Chemistry Administ Administrative Offices for achieving gold certification. That is very exciting and I sincerely applaud you. So congratulations. And then the second office that I would like to highlight is the Department of Communication, who also achieved gold status certification. The Department of Communication switched to using paper that had a much higher recycled content, which is fantastic. And they also offer vegetarian options now at all of their events, which is great to see. They, in the future, plan to continue working with their vendors and caterers to reduce waste and to hopefully achieve zero waste events down the road. So I congratulate the Department of Communication and specifically Colleen Kling, who is the Sustainability Ambassador on behalf of the, on behalf of the department. So congratulations and keep up the great work. I hope that many of you here today also reach out to us and uh, get certified this fall. So thank you again for being here. We are so appreciative to see each and every one of you. All right. Thank you, Mary Dees, and also congratulations for the new units with uh, the certificate. Um, so uh, right now, uh, now in the following, I'm going to, uh, uh, we're going to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Mohamed Atana, the executive director of uh, University Facility and Service uh, to share his uh, uh, comments. And also Dr. Atana will introduce or Energy Conservation Incentive Awards, and uh, also the International F uh, Fraser Challenge Awards. Uh, so he's, he and others were present the awards to the, to the winners. So, Thank you, Dr. Kai. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, I'm very happy to be here today to uh, celebrate the launch of this plan. Facility and Service is proud partner in the ICAP efforts. And I am personally very proud of all our uh, staff who are contributed to the ICAP development and implementation over the last decade. Especially our very own Facility and Service Sustainability leader, Morgan White. I uh, also want to take a moment to uh, specifically acknowledge the core ICAP 2020 uh, publishing team, Meredith Moore, Jenna Kurtzwell, and Tony Mancusu at the Institute of Sustainability, Energy, and the Environment. This was a tremendous effort, and you did a great job bringing together so many campus and community perspective in this comprehensive sustainability plan. Thank you, everyone. Uh, while the ICAP includes several aspects, that facilities and service works with, I am going to focus in, um, on energy. Uh, energy is the largest contributor to our campus greenhouse gas emission, as you might expect. I will cover our green power partnership, the excellent freezer challenge, and this year's ESIPS award. So let's start. Next slide, please. The United States Environmental Protection Agency runs a program that recognizes leaders in the use of clean energy. They focus on renewable power sources, and we have been a recognized green power partner since 2015. Currently, we are getting 7% of our campus electrical demand from wind and solar sources. Next slide, please. As you see on the slide, we are continuing to grow. Solar Farm 2, construction underway, and you can see that on the video that is playing now. It's a camera capture on site. This 12.3 megawatt solar farm 
is being built at the corner of First and Kurtz, just north of Savoy. When completed in January 2021, we will surpass the ICAP objective to produce at least 25,000 megawatt hours per year from on-campus solar. You can visit this camera, and it's a real-time camera actually, at go.fs.illinois.edu slash solar camera. As you see on the screen as well, Solar Farm 3 is in discussion and it's progressing. This is a proposal to purchase at least 90,000 megawatt hours per year from off-campus solar. It would be generated from a new solar array built in the state of Illinois with clear additionality. And that's a very important piece, clear additionality. Once approved and built, we will meet the ICAP obje objective to use at least 140,000 megawatt hours per year from clean power sources. As you see on the pie chart, 33% of our total power demand as shown in yellow, orange, and blue, and green in this pie chart is uh, renewable sources. So that's an excellent uh, progress. Next slide, please. Now uh, let's look at the International Freezer Challenge. Next slide, please. So our campus joined this program four years ago. And for the last three years, we have won the higher education category every year. The program organizers at My Green Lab and I2SL were so impressed so that they gave us a special winning streak award. So no one else got this award. Facilities and Service is very dedicated to supporting the research community and working very collaboratively and very closely with our researchers. And we are excited to see so many participants in this program. It is one of our initial efforts to align the campus research community with the campus sustainability efforts and the ICAP. To announce the winning labs who contributed to this program, let's listen to Dr. Susan Martinez, Vice Chancellor for Research. I'm Susan Martinez. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And I have the distinct honor here to recognize some of our top scoring labs. At number one, we have the Downey Lab led by Dr. Deborah Katz Downey from Plant Biology in the School of Integrative Biology. And at number two, we have the Denmark Lab led by Nicholas Reinhardt in the Department of Chemistry at the School of Chemical Sciences. And number three, the Department of Energy sponsored CABI Lab with the effort led by Lucianne Burris. The CABI Lab is located in the Institute of Genomic Biology and is co-sponsored by the Institute for Sustainability, Energy and the Environment. Honorable mention goes to the Bello Lab in Crop Sciences and that was led by Julianne Seabauer. And on our campus, the highest energy savings goes to Martin Grubela's lab from chemistry led by the PI, Martin Grubela, and also the Helferich Lab from nutritional sciences that was led by Molly Black within the College of ACES. Overall, all of the participants in the 2020 International Laboratory Freezer Challenge worldwide contributed to a combined savings of 3.2 million, 3.2 million to emphasize that kilowatt hours per year worldwide. This is a truly amazing feat. And I'm so very proud of our amazing community of university researchers. Congratulations to all of the winners and thank you again for your efforts. Congratulations to all the participants who were able to preserve through the pandemic and achieve such an honor. I also wish to thank our Facilities and Service Energy Conservation Specialist, Paul Foote, who has coordinated this program every year. Thank you. Now for the Energy Conservation Incentive Program winners, ESIP. 
Next slide, please. These ESIP awards were developed to encourage people all across campus to actively participate in energy conservation. To reach our ICAP goals, a lot more people need to be involved. So a key aspect of this is the communication about the winning buildings. There are two categories of winners here. The energy advancement winners, working with our teams to reduce energy through programs like retro commissioning or energy performance contracts. The second category is the occupant action winners who achieved success through their own actions. Awards are based on percent reduction in total building energy from FY19 to FY20, as we will see in the next few slides. Now, to announce the winners, I am pleased to introduce my colleague, Mr. Robert Roman, our new Director of Utilities and Energy Services at Facilities and Service at the University of Urbana, uh, Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Rob? Thank you, Dr. Tala. Next slide, please. Uh, the number five winner of the ISIP awards this year goes to the Forbes Natural History Building. Uh, there's a lot of uh, new digital controls were installed in there and experienced a reduction of over 39%, which is equal to $70,000 a year. Next slide, please. Our number four winner is the Noise Laboratory of Chemistry. This is a, an ongoing ESCO project with lots of work continuing to go on. Uh, energy reduction of greater than 40%. And that was equal to $70,000 a year so far in energy costs. Next slide, please. Number three winner in the ESIP awards for energy advancement was a natural history building with a 44% reduction, which also was a $70,000 achievement so far this year. Next slide, please. Our number two winner was the engineering hall. Again, $70,000 savings was achieved uh, and it's a 45% uh, uh, um, savings for that as well. Next slide, please. Our number one winner was a wood engineering laboratory with over 55%. Uh, this, uh, this building is, uh, we found a lot of issues that we could fix on there and they were, uh, having steam systems in there that were fighting the uh, air conditioning systems. And uh, we actually realized a 24% or I'm sorry, $24,000 a year energy reduction in that building. Next slide, please. Our occupant action of winners, number four, starts with the student dining and residential programs. It shows a greater than 15% reduction which is equal to uh, $350,000 in utility savings. Next slide. Number three winner is McKinley Health Center. And they've reduced their energy cost by about 16, correction, 66,000 a year, which is greater than 19%. Next slide, please. University High School comes in at number two and they've reduced their energy consumption by more than 25%, and that's equal to about $28,000 per year. The number one winner for Occupant Action Award for the ESIP Award is the Campus Rec Center East, and they've reduced over 26%, and their utility bill is down about $95,000 a year. This is from working with their staff there at Campus Rec. Uh, they've done a great job there. Next slide, please. Honorable mention has to go to uh, the Burnside Lab. This is a difficult decision for everybody to make, but it was a very difficult project and everybody at the College of Aces kicked in on this one and they were able to uh, remove that building from service. And that, that saves about $85,000 a year in utility costs alone. Congratulations to all the ESIP winners this year. Back to you, Dr. Atala. Thank you uh, very much, Rob. Uh, this is really great progress. Uh, well done, everyone. 
uh, with all these efforts uh, over the last several years, we now have the best energy use intensity among the Big Ten schools. Through these efforts of facilities and service and our partners across campus, the average energy per square foot has gone down 42.8% since the ICAP baseline year, uh, which is FY08, uh, 2008. Uh, through, um, so through this effort, we, we have made so much progress that we advanced our energy conservation goals in this ICAP from a final 50% reduction to a new goal of 60% reduction in energy per square foot by the year 2050. So good luck in achieving this. And uh, next slide, please. So congratulations. I am very proud of all the progress and I look forward, myself and my team, to working with you all to achieve all of our ICAP 2020 goals. Back to you, Dr. Kai. Thank you, Dr. Atana, and also thanks, uh, Mr. Roman. And uh, congratulations to all, win uh, all award winners. Um, so uh, next, can we can we see the next slide, please? Or do we have a time for a poll? Is this a time for another poll? All right. So maybe we, let's let's just do that before we start the next uh, program. All right, thank you. All right, again, uh, Dr. Atana and uh, Mr. Roman, thank you. And uh, congratulations to our award winners. Uh, so what you say on the screen is our uh, procedures for Illinois Climate Action Plan. Uh, as you can see here, we have three levels. Uh, the SWAT team, uh, so our SWAT teams are at the road level. So in the middle level, we have uh, uh, Illinois Working Group for ICAP. And at the top level, we have the Sustainability Council. So first, I want to thank uh, the, uh, all members of the IWG. Uh, so thank you for your, for your great service. Uh, so the IWG discussed the recommendations from the SWAT teams. And, uh, and, and then uh, we submit uh, some recommendations either to sustainability council or to some units. And I also want to thank our uh, council members. And uh, so your work, your support has speed up the sustainability, campus sustainability development. And, and finally, I really want to thank our, our SWAT team members. All right, our SWAT teams include uh, students, staff, and the faculty members. And uh, so your work is really critical uh, to uh, bring the ideas, the recommendations into implementations. So now in the following, I, I would like to welcome the student members uh, of our SWAT teams to present their work, uh, including uh, their, their past achievements and also some ICAP 2020 K objectives. Now let's welcome the student uh, members of SWAT.
Davis. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Davis. I'm a junior in mechanical engineering, and I'm on the energy SWAT team. Sorry, but there's a little even mini typo. That should say increase energy use intensity, reduce overall energy use. But increase intensity um, is one of our main goals this year that we're really excited. As you saw that, um, as you saw in the previous few slides, we've been doing a great job on campus making the energy intensity of our buildings as um, as good as it should be. We wanted to make sure that they're working to increase the compliance with building energy codes. Um, and one thing we really want to look at this year is enhancing the building envelopes, um, which means making sure that heat isn't leaking out in the winter, um, as you can imagine in like this little infrared picture, um, since keeping heat in is a major way we can make sure that energy is being used effectively on campus. Um, some other things we're definitely making sure to look at is increasing accountability um, in the administration as we um, look to uh, make buildings better and space growth. Um, and defining what the campus is. Like, for example, we're, we have a lot of great growth going on, such as my own uh, department, the Sydney Lou Mechanical Engineering Building is going to be great. Um, but we just have to make sure that as the administration seeks to expand the campus to make it better for students, they understand the costs associated with um, meeting the ICAP objectives. Um, next slide, please. Then some more exciting things, as we heard earlier, we are looking to divest from fossil fuel fuel companies, um, hopefully by 2025, making sure that um, we're sustainably investing and making decisions that are, um, I guess, respecting all of the futures and environment. Um, and furthermore, as we've already talked about a little bit, we are hoping to increase generation, both for electricity and thermal energy, so heating and power. Um, from clean renewable sources. Um, we have talked a little bit about the solar farms already, solar farm 2.0 and even 3.0 that we're looking at. Um, many of you are familiar with the geothermal project on the Bardeen Quad um, in the past year, which has uh, been going well. And then in the future, we're looking to consider renewable natural gas, which means natural gas that's not fracked from the ground, um, but created naturally through biological processes and is um, very much so carbon neutral, and even possibly um, looking to nuclear to cleanly meet campus energy needs. These are just some ideas that are in the works. Um, next slide, please. Um, but overall, I'm just really excited um, to be on the energy team this year. Um, personally, I like to see kind of issues from the bigger picture and how all of these areas come together, where in lecture I can learn about energy conversion systems and how to design the best power plant. But really coming on the energy SWAT team, we can see how this uh, community aspect, economic aspects, um, all of the stakeholders come together and making policy and finding ways where we can make a difference today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Leah Courtney, and I'm a sophomore in civil and environmental engineering. And I'm also a member of the C Fellows program, the sustainability minor. Um, and I'm one of the students on the zero waste SWAT team. Hi, I'm Cassidy Steele. I'm a junior in natural resources and environmental sciences in the College of ACES, and I'm a Zero Waste SWAT team member as well as a um, SE Fellows uh, member. Um, some of the cool past achievements that we really liked were the re was Recycle Mania. So in 2014, there was this competition um, to see who could like produce the most recycling and like um which encourages waste reduction to the landfill and I think it was just really cool because a lot of students are really competitive and so if you can bring fun into re waste reduction then you can get more participants you can go to the next slide um one of the cool current objectives is a food literacy project um this is to track the carbon footprint, water footprint, and nitrogen footprint of the food that is served in the dining halls. Um, last year, I lived in the dining halls, and I know that it would have been really interesting um, to see what the food that I was eating, what its impact was to the earth, because um, a lot of students would make different choices if they knew this information. So it would allow students to know more about what they're eating and what the food that they're eating is doing to the planet. 
So some exciting future goals that we have for the Zero Waste team is the creation of a compost program for students and faculty to turn in their own compost, which would re greatly reduce the amount of food waste uh, created on campus, as well as uh, promoting the food literacy program um, each month uh, or for a month in September. We've already started that this year, um, but this will encourage students to be aware of the impact of the food that they are consuming, like Leah talked about. Yeah, so I chose zero the zero waste SWAT team because over quarantine, my family started composting a lot more and it just like really increased my interest in um, noticing how much I produced waste. And even during the waste reduction challenge that IC is hosting this October, it was really interesting to see how much waste we produce. And so that's why I really enjoy the zero waste SWAT team. And yeah, I think that's all. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Mallory. I am the student clerk on the Land and Water SWAT team. And I'm very excited to um, share with you all some information about what our SWAT team has been up to. Um, the Land and Water team is actually new as of the fall of 2019. It was um, a combination of two previous teams. Um, so, it has been very exciting um, since all of the like new progress has started with this team. And this team has really brought together experts all over campus, um, student fa students, faculty, and staff that um, I'm just consistently impressed by um, the conversations that we have and the level of knowledge that people have about our land and water use on campus. So it's always very um, exciting to be a part of these conversations. I think that the broad nature of this team allows for really innovative ideas and ambitious goals. As um, Chancellor Jones previously mentioned, the ICAP this year as a whole is very bold and ambitious. And I think that the land and water objectives certainly follow suit. Um, in addition to um, our, you know, wanting to improve land and water use, uh, a lot of our objectives also focus on creating measures of success and collecting data so that we can continue to track land and water use and um, track our progress in years to come. So here's a quick overview of our objectives for um, 2020. We have implementing the resilient landscape strategy, increasing the number of trees, increasing pollinator friendly areas, doubling green infrastructure installations, cover crops on the south farms and monitoring soil health. Um, these things certainly are not possible without the support from a wide variety of um, departments and people on campus. So I'm very thankful for the support and hope that that support can continue so that we can reach these very ambitious goals that we have set out. And that is all for land and water. Thank you. Um, hi, yes, we are the transportation team. Uh, my name is Claire Rathslag. I'm a sophomore in civil and environmental engineering. Uh, I'm really passionate about sustainability and um, I'm really excited to make an impact on campus with that passion, particularly uh, with transportation. Um, hi, I'm Rio. I'm a sophomore in chemical and biomolecular engineering and echoing everything Claire said. And Bede is our third um, student member. Next slide, please. Um, to highlight some past achievements, Illinois has been recognized at the goal level for the Illinois Campus Sustainability Compact, which is just um, recognizing Illinois for our sustainable practices that we have integrated. Um, campus has also received the silver status as a bike friendly university. And as of October 2019, fleet emissions have been down by 15% which was done through the reduction of both idling time and the number of trips, as well as increasing the MPG. Next slide, please. Uh, to highlight some current objectives we have, one is to establish an electric vehicle task force. Um, and we have a report from 2018 we can use um, to go ahead and move forward with uh, not only making it more accessible or not only having more electric vehicles on campus, but also making it more accessible to have them on campus by providing things such as EV charging stations. Um, and again, another objective that I know another team talked about uh, is 
it's fully divesting from fossil fuel companies. Um, and there's a lot of room within transportation to be using sustainable forms of energy, such as um, solar energy. Next slide, please. And then some future goals that we have is to to have the complete conversion of the campus suite to renewable fuels as methane laden um, biogas is a potential fuel source. Another goal of ours is to reduce the business travel emissions, um, which we want to do by encouraging telecommuting in place of these business trips. And our third goal would be to fulfill the campus bike plan through the imp implementation of the bike pathway facilities, bike parking, and bike rentals. And yeah, that's all from us. Hello, back again for the education team. I also serve as the student clerk for the education SWAT team. Um, and this team is also new as of the fall of 2019. And um, this team has really brought together some very, very passionate people about sustainability education. Um, our objectives focus on expanding and improving sustainability education opportunities for all students so that no matter what the student's level of interest is or their background, they can incorporate sustainability education into their experience here at the University of Illinois. Um, we have this quote that sustainability will become a core part of the Illinois student experience. And I truly think that through these objectives um, that will become the reality. Um, so we have the broadening sustainability education, sustainability course catalog, um, creating an environmental leadership program, creating a sustainability internship program, incorporating sustainability into career fairs and establishing a graduate certificate in sustainability. Um, and through all of these, um, this will really increase the, I think, visibility of sustainability to students on campus. And also um, through some of these initiatives, they can also not only take sustainability into their careers, but also into their everyday lives. Um, and something I really appreciate about this SWAT team that I think is really exciting is the appreciation for the student perspective because it is so heavily focused on serving students. Um, students are always heard loud and clear in the SWAT team and in the creation of these objectives. And I hope that students can continue to be centered in um, these objectives in the future. That is all for education. Hi, my name is Joseph Park. I'm a senior studying economics um, so for a little introduction regarding the resilience team, the team was initially formed in 2019, thanks to a joint proclamation signed by Chancellor and the mayors of uh, Champaign and Urbana in 2018. And the uh, main objective of this team is to collaborate with other SWAT teams to develop recommendations that may be sent to the ICAP working group, the cities or all parties. Next slide. So some of the past achievements of this group, uh, it is a rather new group, um, but in the past, some of the main objectives were to urge for increased pollinator supportive habitats in the greater Champaign-Urbana area, also helping identify 24 hour, and cooling, 24 hour cooling centers and pushing for aerial wide stormwater management plans, um, and also supporting thematic landscaping throughout uh, Champaign-Urbana, respectful of Native American heritage. and. Um, think due to the pandemic, uh, the team has also been working on slowing the spread of COVID-19, uh, especially with vulnerable populations. So the two objectives that the team uh, is prioritizing right now are the Environmental Justice Plan and the Local Carbon Offsets Program, uh, both of which uh, we wish to get established by the fiscal year of 2024. So for the Environmental Justice Plan, uh, this focuses on the human component of climate resilience, uh, emphasizing historically marginalized, underserved, and vulnerable populations, uh, especially within the metro area. And for the local carbon offsets program, this program is focused on reducing emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases to compensate for the emissions made elsewhere. One example would be planning trees to offset air travel, and the team is looking into partnering with, with a facilitator or validator, for example, urban offsets. So here are the current team members. So I myself joined the team uh, very recently, actually. Uh, I'm currently applying to law school and I hope to pursue environmental law in the future. And I thought this would be a practical hands-on application um, to work in my local community before I head off to law school. Thank you. Oh. 
on the right. So do we have the engagement team next? Oh, hi. Uh, so my name's Fina. I'm a junior in our culture and biological engineering, and I'm a student representative for the engagement team. Okay. The team is actually new. We started out this year. Last year, I was on the education team, but then I, I decided on the engagement team because I wanted to have more focus on like student involvement. And yeah, so some highlights for um, some past achievements. So this is a newer um, team, but in the past, uh, IC has had a lot of certified green campus programs. So for like labs, offices, and Greek life. So it's like help students get more involved in being sustainable on campus. And currently this semester, our main focus is trying to have more green events at Alina Union. So one of our objectives is that the Alina Union and Alina Union Board should commit 80% of their events to qualify as sustainable events by 2024. And uh, yeah, so the Alina Union Board is uh, very actively involved and like agreed to do this with us and they want to develop, um, yeah, just more green event certificates in general. Uh, the issue with this is that there needs to be a person that like has to monitor each event. Not issue, but that we need like a person that like has to like like make sure that each event is like following green standards per event. So like that's why it would be a long-term goal instead of a short-term goal as many people to like be held accountable for doing this. Uh, because of Corona, it's easier to, to do some short-term goals now. There's no, not as much traveling or anything as right now. But yeah, um, so our goal for a short-term is to do 40% and then by 2024 do 80%. And then yeah, next slide. Um, and hi, I'm Miranda Johnson. I'm the other student um, member of this team or one of the other student members. Um, Fina kind of touched on most of uh, what we're looking at going forward, but just some other highlights of our objectives. Um, we're looking at uh, working with the Youth Sustainability Summit that's held by local teenagers in the area um, on a, I believe a yearly basis um, to develop a passion for sustainability in local youth. Um, and then she talked about the Alina Union Board um, and Alina Union events that we're looking at. Um, some other things that the team is working on include um, supporting the Greener Campus Program, just enhancing the overall culture of sustainability on campus, um, becoming a part of the Green Sports Alliance, um, introducing the Give Pulse system for public engagement and um, sustainability volunteering opportunities, and then also working to keep the ICAP portal on the website updated. Oh, and um, I joined the engagement team because I just, I wrote that I wanted to get more involved in sustainability on campus and also getting the word out in general to the rest of campus about all of the great work that's being done with the ICAP and um, just spreading that word across campus to all uh, faculty, students, and staff. All right. Okay, all right. Thank you, uh, our uh, SWAT team student members and the clerks. And now in the next few minutes, I would like to invite uh, uh, Ms. Morgan White uh, to need a sign-in of ICAP by everyone. Uh, Morgan, probably almost everyone in this meeting should know Morgan. Uh, so she's a uh, Associate Director for Sustainability, Sustainability at FNS. She's also FNS liaison with ICA. So now Morgan, your time. So Morgan actually hopped on the second Zoom link already, and I hope to see all of you there. Like Shiming said, we will have a public signing of the ICAP for all of you to also contribute your signatures, which would be wonderful, and also for fun conversation, as we would do if we were in person together. So check out oh. the meeting ID and password that Jenna put in the chat, and we will see you all there in a few minutes. Thank you so much again for being here and for all of your efforts. Morgan also put up a direct link as well, if you prefer to copy and paste that in, folks. And we're, uh, we thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you very much. And we look forward to continuing to work together this upcoming year and beyond. All right. Thanks, everyone, for attending uh, this event. So.